Hello everyone, today I'm going to teach you how to play Tekken 7. I know there's a lot of people that want to play the game and don't understand things like frames, frame data, how to block, how to attack and how to do combos. This beginner guide will help you with everything. So make sure that you lot sit tight, subscribe to the channel because I've got a lot of content coming out that will help you with Tekken and yeah, enjoy the show. We'll be showcasing a handful of techniques using the Tekken notation as you can see here. Alright, so movement. In 2D fighting games, you get to move forward, move back, crouch, and jump. Because Tekken is a 3D fighting game, you also get to sidestep. So you can sidestep like this, side, you can sidewalk by double tapping up and holding it, or double tapping down and holding it. So it gives you more of movement. This is also useful when your back is against the wall. We also have Korean Backdash, which is an advanced movement, but I already have guides that cover that, which you can check out after this video. The reason why Korean Backdash is such a great tool to have is purely because it allows you to escape from danger, escape from frame traps and stuff like that as well. Which, again, frame traps and stuff like that is explained in other videos. But yeah, Korean Backdash is just good for movement, getting out of dangerous situations and be able, being able to control the field. System. Both players aim to fight until one succeeds in a KO. It is a 1v1 fighting game. System mechanics. The game has rage mode. Now rage mode, what is that? Rage mode is basically when your life is 20% or less and you get a damage buff. So attacks will do more damage. So as you can see here, that does 22 damage. Now does 20 damage. This throw does 35 damage. The throw now does 38 damage. Rage is basically like a comeback mechanic. So you get a damage buff, but you also get access to a rage drive, which is an additional move when you're in rage. Most characters have one, but some characters have two, and they can do quite a lot of damage depending on what combo you do. Kazuya has a few rage drive mechanics. So one of them is up back one plus two, which allows him to go into Devil Kazuya. And then he also has forward, neutral, down, down, forward, 1 plus 4, which you can either not hold up forward, but if you do hold up forward, it will go into a attack grab. So that's without holding up forward. And that is with holding up forward. You also have access to things called rage art, where they go into a cinematic attack that does damage. Most people like to do it in combos some people might do it by reacting to things but here is Kazuya's rage up both Kazuya's rage drive and rage art takes rage mode away so you spend the whole rage mode and then you go back to normal so here are a list of the characters that have two rage drives and this is what they look like Some characters have access to meter. Those characters are Akuma, Geese, and Eliza. You spend your time doing attacks, throws to build the meter. And then when you get full meter, you'll get access to doing super moves. So that is, with Akuma, you have quarter circle forward times two, one plus two. You could use half a meter and do EX moves. That move is forward, down, down, forward, both punches. You also get access to special moves. So that's like quarter circle forward, one plus two, which is his Aduken. So these are kind of like upgraded attacks than what he usually had. So these characters like Akuma, Geese and Eliza have special moves. So these special moves are basically moves that are unique to them. They might have projectile, they might have invincibility something like that. So Akuma's one is Fireball, Shoyuken, which is an uppercut, and Hurricane Kick or Tatsu, which is quarter circle back three or quarter circle back four. He also has access to um, some stuff out of Demon Flip, which is 
Forward, down, down, forward and kick. But you cannot do EX version of those. The only ones you could do EX versions for is the Fireball, the Uppercut and the Hurricane Kick. Geese has a few as well. With Geese, Geese has Repuken. He has double Repuken, which is quarter circle forward two. He also has Jaykin, which is half circle back three. And half circle back four. He has Air Fireball. And then he has quarter circle back two and options from it. So quarter circle back two, three. Quarter circle back two, four. Quarter circle back two, one. The difference between Geese and Akuma is his max mode. You can go into max mode by just pressing one plus three plus two. And then your bar can go down like that, which is slow. You, your bar fully goes down. But if you cancel it from his moves, like back three, two, you get half of the bar that goes down. And then you have access to additional moves while he's in max mode. But when he's not in max mode, you can't do the EX moves. Whereas Akuma can do EX moves at any time as long as he has 50% of his super meter. So as you can see, I've just showcased Geese doing his EX moves, but he needs to go into max mode to do them. Geese has access to two supers as well, instead of one. Like how Akuma had super fireball, Geese has another kind of super fireball or super replicant. Which is done like that. Then he has Raging Storm. Which is done like that. Okay, so Eliza's pretty similar. So Eliza, she has quarter circle forward. One plus two. You could do that from four forward, four, two. You can also do the glide, moon, moon glide. That's by doing forward three plus four. So then you have a, an option to choose four, two, or one, two. You can also do her unblockable by pressing one plus two as well, which makes it faster. If I do this normal one, you can see the difference between damage and how slow it hits the opponent. She also gets access to a super but doesn't do hardly any damage compared to the rest of the characters, but it's basically a free launcher. Which can then lead to a deadly combo. But yeah, that is it when it comes to system mechanics. All right, so I know you lot wanna learn the juicy combos and stuff, but first I gotta prepare you for the basics. So the first things first is the attacks. So you have different attack properties. So you have high, mid, low you should have special special mids as well as you can see the glow's green but i'll teach you that in another video the main thing i want you lot to know is high mids and lows you also have things like unblockables so as you can see blocking right but if i do an unblockable it shows an exclamation mark that means you cannot block that move there's certain things you can do, like you can either sidewalk, sidestep, backdash, or do... You, you might even be able to crouch. It all depends on what move is being done. You could either sidestep, backdash, crouch. It all depends on what it is. In this game, like I mentioned earlier on, you can sidestep, you could sidewalk, and that avoids a lot of moves. But if you do homing moves, then that tracks all the way around. So it stops people from sidestepping. With Bob's homing attack, it is 4-4. As you can see, it's got the white glow to it and it's got like a motion blur with it as well. So that's how you could tell if a move's homing. If you say for example, if you didn't know your opponent, your opponent's attack was homing, you could see by that. You also have moves that tail spin the opponent. You could it's I call it tail spin, some people call it screwed, but it's entirely up to you. So as you can see, I was able to continue on my combo when I do stuff like that. And that's how you get into your combos, which I'll explain a little bit later on. All right, so in this game, you've got defense. Now, most games don't allow you to just stand and you're able to block. 
but if you're not pressing anything, your character is in a state called neutral guard. Now, as you can see, I'm going to set him to guard, or I could even set him to attack me, but it doesn't matter. So, as you can see, I, I'm not holding back. So, that state is called neutral guard. You can also move back, and that also blocks attacks as well. It's entirely up to you. When you crouch, you're only blocking lows. In most 2D fighting games, if you crouch, what happens is, is that you can block mids as well. That doesn't apply to this game. If you crouch and someone does a mid, you're going to get hit. The way to block mids is by standing. As you can see, Jin can sidestep Gigas down forward one. And it all depends on what way you step. So that's why I was saying to you before, sidestepping and sidewalking is very good in this game. And it has its use for defense. Because now, say for example, I can punish. Just by sidestepping. So those are the defensive tools. We also have one more that I want to teach you. There are more in-depth stuff, but again, this is just to get you started. I don't want to just put so much pressure onto you when you're learning the game. So yeah, this is just to get you started. All right, so there's also a universal move called low parry. So to low parry, all you have to do is press down forward at the same time as the low move and you'll get a low parry. After the low parry, you get to do a combo with Jin. So make sure no matter what character you have that you low parry and you learn the low parry combo because this can be a game changer in many situations and it has helped tournament players come back from what looks like a defeat. All right, so we're gonna now get into grabs. So grabs are high property. Right, as you can see there, it says high when I tried to grab him. So you can duck grabs, but you gotta be careful because there's some crouch grabs that will catch you if you try to crouch. Best thing is to do is try to break it accordingly. There's more of an advanced video what shows you how to break foes. It's just by pressing one, two, one plus two, by seeing what arm reaches out first. I'll explain that a little bit near the end. It's a bit more of a, on the intermediate side, but once you get a hang of it, it's pretty straightforward. So like I showed you, there's normal grabs. You got grabs from the side that are different. You got grabs from the back that does more damage, usually 50 or 60. There we go. And then you also have command grabs. Now, I know in most 2D fighting games, command grabs can't be broken, but in the Tekken universe, command grabs can be broken with one, two, or one plus two. And I'll even show you, I'm gonna do a few command grabs right now. So I'm gonna do these, I'm gonna do Tombstone. I'm now gonna set the computer to break these throws, just to prove my point. So there you go, as you can see, command grabs and normal grabs can be broken in this game. The only throws that can't be broken is back throws. Back throws can't be broken in this game. Side throws can be broken also. So there's characters that have multi throws. So there's King, Armor King, and Mardo. I'm now going to do King's multi throw just to make sure that you know what it looks like. Right, the issue with multi throws is if you don't break the throw, you're giving your opponent free damage. So you need to figure out what throw it could be. Now to limit this down, like I said, it's one, two, or one plus two. There's some exceptions to some throws, which is 
a very small few but in terms of like king's multi throws it's either a one two or one plus two break so like i'm gonna throw him now and then put the input and then i'm gonna set the computer to break it see so you can break the throw there are some rare cases which i said before which is the figure four i'm not gonna try and <laughs> i'm not gonna try and do it in this video i'm just gonna set the computer to then reverse the throw so there you go that is done by pressing 3 plus 4 at the same time as when the figure 4 attack hits. Pretty difficult, but it can be done and you can reverse it. And that's not a 1, a 2 or a 1 plus 2 break. Alright, so I want to show you how crouch grabs work. So crouch grabs, they don't catch people standing. They only catch people crouching. So that's how crouch grabs work. But then you also have grabs grounded. And again, this is probably something that's not familiar in the 2D fighting game format because most of the time when the opponent is on the floor, you can't attack them. They have to get up or do delayed wake up or something like that. Characters like King, Armor King, Marduk. I don't know if there's any other characters. I think that is it. But from the top of my head, it's those three characters that can do ground grabs. And most of the time, can lead to big damage so armakin's got one on the side fa head facing down head facing up so marduk's multi throw works in a different way so marduk goes into valtudo stance and then press one plus two you then have access to a mini game so you then either press one two or one plus t and with this you then get access to damage depending on whether your opponent guards properly or not. Obviously, to reverse it as the opponent, you have to press 1, 2 or 1 plus 2 regardless. It's, it's, you have to guess right. So, here we go. Armor King is now on the floor. If Armor King stays on the floor, Marduk can then do his ground grab and then get back on for Valtudo. Also, Marduk has access to two other options. So I said one, one plus two, or two, but he also has access to three plus four, which is a one plus two break, one plus three, which is a one break, and a two plus four, which is a two break. One plus three. Two plus four. Three plus four. Marduk also has Val Tudo tackle stance from Froze as well. So quarter circle forward one plus three. If you press one plus two, he will then flip over and then go into the stance. If you do quarter circle forward two plus four, not that. He would then do a power slam and then go into stance. All right, so we was talking about King's throws before. So King's multi throws, the way how you input them is by pressing buttons at the same time as the throw is going on. But you have to do it at the right time. If you're wondering how to do this, all you have to do is press start, go into the move list, and have a look at the multi throws. This is what I do to learn how to do his multi throws. And then you'll then see how it's being input. You press the demo, press A. Look, watch this. So, like, say for example. And you can see the timing, right? But, say for example, now there's more than, you know, say for example, if there's three of the throw, multi throw. You then look at the previous move. So say for example, it says 
this is during sleeper but then if i want to do human necktie I, and it says during sleeper i would then look at the sleeper commands and then i'll look at during sleeper commands i'll then look at human necktie so then i'll press this and view the demo to see what timing you input it when sleeper is going on not all of king's multi throws are time specific some of them are more lenient than others but it's best to go to the demo to see which ones are which but that's me covering multi throws in tekken 7. we're now going to move into combos and then wall combos all right so we're going to get to the last part so the last part is combos combos usually start with launchers so launchers are moves that launch you into the air for combo potential do the tail spin then you do the finisher so that was just a basic combo i wasn't trying to show you the max damage combo it's just to get a rough idea of what is the starter the starter is usually a launcher so leroy has a few of them he has down forward two one plus two he has orbital which is better known as a jumping axe kick Brian has one of these, so does Lars as well. And they're usually safe. So with this combo, you get that. So it's basically just launches the opponent into the air just for you to do combos. Usually when the opponent is blocking, it's really hard to do combos. So you need to try and do things like poking and annoying things to loosen up the opponent's defense so that you can get these launchers so you could do combos and then carry them to the wall and then do wall combos. We're now going to talk about counter hits. Most of the time, when a character has counter hit properties to moves, they usually cause stun or they cause the opponent to act in a different way. Leroy has a counter hit that stuns the opponent when you hit them while they try to attack you, which is known as a counter hit launcher. Leroy also has another counter hit launcher. This one is from Hermit Starts Back 1. Why use combos? They do damage and plays a big factor into the game. If you really want to beat people, beat your friends, beat your opponents and stuff like that, you are going to need these combos. You can also have a look in the menu and check out combos by doing this. Go to sample combos and have a look at these combos. They're all here and you can play the demo as well, it shows you. This is not like how it was when the game first released. They actually show sample combos to help you get on the top of your game. All right, so wall combos are slightly different. So with wall combos, you're probably thinking, oh, how do I learn a wall combo? What do I do for wall combo? It's pretty, sim it's pretty simple and it's pretty straightforward. Most of the time when you're by the wall, you can wall splat your opponent. The wall splat state looks like this. So they kind of get their back hit against the wall and then they kind of fall down in a slow state. They, they look stunned and fall down to the floor. Now, Leroy's one will be down forward one, up forward three plus four, one plus two. Or he has another one, which is a jab, which is one, and then forward three, one plus two, four. Which flips them over. Each character has a good range of tools to use against the wall and to do wall combos i'll show you some examples here wall combo is really useful for keeping your opponent at the wall and making them feel uncomfortable because the lack of movement that they can produce they can only sidestep. So as you can see here, they can only sidestep. But if you have homing moves and you're doing lows and you're really annoying them, they have nowhere to go. So this is why keeping them at the wall is key. 
doing combos and carrying them to the wall and keeping them at the wall is the game plan when there's wall stages. All right, so I'm gonna now talk about different types of stages. Let's go and have a look at them. So as you can see, this is a wall stage. This is a floor break stage. This is a balcony break and wall break stage. Same with this one, this is wallless. So with these type of stages, you have a different type of game plan. So with balcony break stages, sometimes it's good to kind of like keep them close to the wall and then balcony break, then do a proper combo and then carry them to the other side of the wall from the second level stage. I'm gonna showcase that to you in a second. I just wanna just go through the stages. We also have kind of like a hexagon stage so that has different types of combos on there. You also have, this one's kind of a weird type stage, but as you can see here, it kind of like has its edges around like the bottom side of the stage. Also have another hexagon, then wallless at the last stage. And then you also have this stage as well. Same thing, same thing. Wall break, but it's like there's not that much left of the stage. Afterwards, it's kind of like an extra additional part. Balcony break again, then it has like kind of, I think like the second stage, the, the second floor of that stage is quite, or the first floor should I say, is quite um, big. This stage is pretty big as well, but there's, that's it. There's no like, Balcony break, this is wallless, wallless. Uh, this one has wall break, wall break. It has one, two, three wall breaks, and then a balcony break. This one is just a long stage. This one's another long stage. This one has a balcony break and floor break, balcony break, and then balcony break, and the stage is long after that. So yeah, let me show you what I'll do on this stage. All right, so this stage has a balcony break, like I said. But then there's moves that won't break the balcony break, but then there's moves that will. The wall, the moves that do wall stun are the ones that break the, the balcony break. So this mechanic that got introduced into Tekken 7 season five is called wall crush. What this does is allows you to have additional frames to do things when they're in the wall stagger state. So as you can see, they kind of fall forward and kind of crouch down. But if you do a move that breaks the wall, so like I was showing you before, fall forward one plus two is the shoulder barge with Leroy. That gave them the wall stun. So if I do that here, it would then it would then do balcony break. That would be my game plan if I there was a balcony break stage is to hit them against the wall and then do a combo that carries them to the other side of the wall and then do the wall combo to end it and then they are in this situation where your opponent would want to move away from the wall and then it makes it difficult for them to kind of maneuver all right on a floor break stage what you're trying to do is hit them down in the ground so most things that hit the opponent down in the ground and make them either spike or kind of like flip over and stuff like that, that will break the ground. So lead raise. So lead raise one is down one plus two. So if I done a launcher right now, that will hit them down into the ground. So you just need to know what moves will hit them down to the ground. Most of the time, people will try to combo them against the wall and then hit them down once they kind of stuck to the wall something like that they would they would want to keep them by the wall the whole game plan again like i said is keeping your opponent by the wall and then making it difficult for them to try and come out all right so this stage is a wall break stage as you can see now what i would do as i'm lydia she has a move called four forward one plus two which basically wall splats and breaks the breaks the wall with their aim of doing a wall break is basically again to carry them to the wall this whole game plan is about carrying them to the wall making them feel uncomfortable you know if they're out in a the neutral they can they can use stuff like korean backdash to get away and stuff like that and it then becomes a bit harder to control space but if you if you got them by the wall you've basically controlled space because all, you have all the space behind you to kind of keep them there. I can then move back and stay here, move left and right. Where where can they go? They can't go anywhere, right? And I can then move back 
again, your whole game plan is just to keep them here. Annoy them, keep them there, and do your thing. It's the same as like how any other 2D fighting game or anything like that. You, your aim is to keep them by the wall because it, if they try to jump out of the wall, it's hard because you know that that's what they want to do. And it's the same with this game. You know they're trying to sidestep to try and get around you or they're trying to hit you to get out of the corner. All right, so wall of stage, you, you can literally backdash and move so far. So much freedom to move. So you cannot keep them by the wall because it's a wall of stage, right? So your whole game plan is just to just to try and you know launch them when you can. Also try to do the combos that you need to while when you can, and also try to get access to some low moves if you can. You can move far if you if you feel like you're getting damaged and stuff. You need a game plan, maybe moving back while trying to think how you're gonna come into attack is a good thing. But yeah, no one has the advantage against the wall. So, yeah, that's why I feel like wall of stage. I feel like it, it just kind of mat matters about who has the better combos and who has the better punishment on the day. But again, there's videos on my channel talking about punishment and stuff like that. So go check them out. So I think that wraps up the end of this video. Yo, thank you very much. If you got to the end of this video and you found it interesting, please leave a comment down below. I didn't mention things like Electric Wing, God Fist, Wave Dash and stuff because these things are more on the intermediate slash advanced level. And I wanted to teach the basics. I wanted to revamp the beginner's guide that I done at the start. So that's why I've done it in 2023. So I hope you lot enjoyed. Remember to subscribe if you haven't. If you have, thank you lot very much. The subscriptions are really needed and it does help the channel. So please, please, please. It would mean a lot to me. We're going to be on to the next video. I hope you lot enjoy. Take it easy, everyone. Peace.